My journey into hard rock mining has been one of extraordinary personal development. For the first seven years of my YouTube channel, I was primarily doing alluvial gold hunting, hunting with a pan in a riverbed. And the thing is, if you're an alluvial stream hunter, you're almost always guaranteed to get some gold when you go out. But that is just not the case when you're armed with a metal detector looking for abandoned mines. And my research has led me to this particular spot a mine on a steep hillside. I'm going to try and find it today and take you along for the journey. Fern! Free! Even if I manage to find the mine, there's no guarantee I'm going to be able to find gold. But I got my GPX 6000 with me, and we're going to do our best to find some. At the very top of the four mine series is meant to be an open stope, which will be a big cut in the ground. I think that's right in front of me. Fernie, I'm not joking. It looks like it's right, right there. Well, that was one of the easiest mines I've ever had to find. And then below that, there'll be an open at it, and that goes in 55 meters, apparently. Oh, look at that. Yes. Oh, it's not too bad. It's filled with debris. That's good. That is a beautiful looking old mine. Oh, we got a lot to explore. It does look like other detectorists have been here in the very recent past because we have a dug out flat pad right in the mullet pile. Which is good news for me because it means they're finding gold here. And you can never underestimate your own machine's capabilities. I have a GPX 6000. It's a very sensitive machine. We don't know what was used on this ground. And if they were using something that isn't as sensitive as this, they might have missed stuff. That is just a chasm that goes to nowhere. Now I couldn't find my scoop this morning. I'm hoping it's in here. <laughs> yes, woo! I always forget something. If I had forgotten this, that would have been very annoying. I'm absolutely going to detect up here from the top down through this series of mines first, but it looks like there's some workings down there and I'd like to look at them first. Oh, we've got another nice stope here. Look at this one. Oh, ooh, ew, yuck, yum. Delicious. Scudge. See these quartz veins on the side here? I would love to be able to get a sample of one of them. Stack. Fernie, this is some pretty interesting workings here. Some quartz up in here, and they've taken a significant amount of it, so I'm just wondering if it's worth me taking a sample out of this area. And the reason I'm wondering that is because we've got that open stope right next to us. And these little side veins are known as on echelon vein systems. And on echelon vein systems happen where there is a, a fault and they run horizontally to it. And they can contain some really good gold. That's level and I'm trying to walk down it. So wish me luck. <laughs> oh my God. When I came across this flat pad that had been dug into the side of the hill, with what looked like a stacked stone wall, I wasn't sure exactly what this was used for. At first I thought it was an ore pad, but we'd figure out what it really was quite soon Way after. Way up there is where my detector is, and we've come down through here past that other stope, and now I've come to this little test pit. I don't think this is a major working, they've had a look here, but below me looks like the adit and that's what i'm interested in we have to find out here in a second oh there's another really nice cut here. you can tell these were places of significance when you've got hand stacked rock walls like this they're putting in extra effort to put in retaining walls and things and you can see they've come in here and they have hammered this face and i'm going to guess this is why these are quartz veins that are all decaying out really interesting okay that is a significant mullock pile that's got to be our adit that's got to be our at it. Huge waste rock pile. You do not get waste rock piles like that for no reason. <laughs> yes! That's what I'm talking about. Okay, I don't have my wombat fighting pick. I've got my, um, my scoop. Mm, it smells like animals down here. That's ominous. Right, well, I'm going to save going in here until Mick gets here. Because I want to explore this with Mick. I want to share the moment of finding out what is down the end of this mine. But for now, the signs look good. We've got all the appropriate spider's webs in the roof. You can still see some of the pick marks in the wall from when they chiseled off some of that vein. And some of that vein structure is actually still attached to the wall up here. That's interesting. Oh, look at that quartz. Sorry, Mr. Spider, I'm gonna have to move your web a little bit. That, right there, that is the stuff. And another nice feeder vein that they've left in the side here because it's too thin. But for now, I gotta somehow walk back up that vertical wall. I'm not even joking, like way back up there is where I have my stuff. Even if it's just nails, 
I can't wait to get in that mine. Got my first little noise here. Loud, but not excessive. What do you reckon, Bernie? Wet ground, ground noise, bit of junk. I got one piece of quartz in my scoop. Sad. Ah, <laughs> it could be the shotgun pellet right next to it. Well, let's run the board for lead. So after Fernie helped me dig out that shotgun pellet, I've been walking around digging out bits of rubbish and nails and scrap iron all through here. Like the least amount of fun you can have. And all those targets are really loud on the detector. Traditionally speaking, gold is a much softer sound. So when I got this sound, I thought it was going to be a bit of scrap lead. That is a loud sound. But can you see it? That, that is a little piece of gold. That's a little piece of gold. Look at that! Bernie, oh my god, Buffer! We got a bit! Yeah! You very rarely find gold straight off the bat. Look at that bit! Especially when there's clearly been other detectorists here. But that is one nice little clunker to get going. I got, I got to dig all the loud targets now. I should be anyway. I really should be anyway. <laughs> That's a target, that's a deep, loud target. Whew, that is deep. That was a bloody deep hole. I think we're running eight inches. 10, 12. Somewhere in this area. I'm betting it's a nail or a scoop. Oh, that's gotta be it. Yeah. Nice big hunk of iron. Got a feeling we're gonna be digging a lot of bits of crap today. Generally speaking, the bigger the mine, the more industry, the more industry, the more junk. Oh, I got junk inside my trunk. Inside my trunk, junk trunk. I love working on steep hillsides, said no prospector ever. Magnetic or not magnetic, that is the game. Magnetic, <laughs> sadness. Yep. Ah, iron fragment. Zach and Mick are both here. Mick is down there detecting one of the lower stopes. And I've done my best to cover this hillside. It's incredibly steep, so it's hard to get to all of the areas that I need to detect. But I think it's time to head all the way down there to that mullock pile. So there's just a little bit of iron. Just a little bit of iron Just here. a little bit of iron here. Not much. Can I speak to the branch manager, please? I got a complaint. Mick and I are just having a little bit of a discussion about what this rock wall could be. I thought it might have been a loading pad, but that doesn't make any sense. And it's actually kind of square. So you've got one wall, the back wall, and then this wall collapsed. And we're noticing that there's all this mud and quartz and stuff in between the rocks. It's like they've chinked the rock stacking so that it was sealed. My current theory is that that's a, a fireplace, like a furnace, possibly, for them to smelt some of the ore or the gold that they had around here. Or possibly even a blacksmith shop with the amount of iron that Mick just pulled out of this little patch with his magnet. Just to give you a, a bit of an idea of how much iron is around here. Like, that's, that's a lot. That's more than... <laughs> that's more than normal. So what do you think it is? A fireplace? Or a hobbit hole. We're no longer gold miners, Mick. We're archaeologists. Archaeology, didn't he? Yeah. We've got some words. Ooh. Walk. Walker. Yeah. And. Company PTD LTD. Oh, Lord, Mick. We hit the jackpot whiskey bottle. I wish it was full. <laughs> oh, if it was. Uh, I didn't drink it. You know I would. Yeah, me too. Now, I don't know about you. But if you find broken bottles inside something that looks like a fireplace, I'm calling that a fireplace. That says number, I'm going to assume 10 with that top part broken off. I just turned my internet on and I googled Walker & Co Party Limited bottle. It's a Vegemite jar. It's an original bottom of a Vegemite jar. So that right there is an original Vegemite jar. I reckon that's the lid off it too. That's unbelievable. I cannot even begin to describe how rare that find is. That Vegemite jar was made between 1923 and 1924. It is the first 
ever Vegemite jar packaging. The Melbourne Museum has one in their collection and Kraft ran a nationwide campaign just to find one, to have it. And Mick, we got part of one. So we now have a date for our mine because of that fireplace, 1923 or four. Mick, I've been waiting. I've been waiting all afternoon to show you this. Oh, God, this is my new home. <laughs> 55 yeah. meters, it's reported to go straight back. All right, well, let's test that out right now. Yep. I like your new home, man. Yeah. It would have only been like, what, one, 1. 1.2 million? Yeah, 1.2. Oh, wow. Look at that old bear, man. That's been Look at that warm. nail, man. Yeah, but look at the wear. Wow. Thing? Maybe haulage on it. Ah, uh, yeah, you can see the track marks. Yeah. See those divots yeah. in the ground? Oh, yeah, there's Yep, the there's track. the tracks. Yeah, wooden tracks, bro. Why am I still wearing sunglasses? Like an absolute knob. I have not been inside a mine with a track still in place yet. That is so cool. So these were made over a hundred years ago and laid in here. There's a scene there. Yeah, look at this. So what's that little alcove? Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah, little vein that they've pinched out, eh? Yeah, they must have been rich enough for them to do some work. Oh yeah, chased it enough. We've got a side yeah. tunnel here. Yeah. So for context, back there where Fernie is, oh, yeah, pinches out just around the bend. we've got another one here. Ah! Oh, I need a hard hat. <laughs> Look at those tracks! Holy crap! That's wicked. Bro! <laughs> That's iridescent rock. Why do I feel like that is poison? I reckon it's poison too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what we, it is. Let's lick it. Lick <laughs> it. Wear on them. And like that's steel plate. Oh, that's that plate you yeah. found up above. That's right. That, that's what locked it together. So that's what they were probably building up there. Yeah, with that Metal forge yeah. because they had to connect these things together. Because yeah. Mick found one of these detecting up above. And we're like, oh, I wonder what that's for. Well, now we know. <laughs> What? Are you kidding me? Oh, bro. oh my god. Oh, it's a candle. That is a wax candle from a hundred plus year old gold mine. No way. That's wicked. That is unbelievable. That is a wax candle. I'm shaking, bro. Look at that. We've got Hessian bags. No one's been in this mine, eh? Not for ages, man. Not for a long time. Well, they've come up here without torches and only gone where the light goes. Yep. That's the footing charge. You can see how it didn't quite slump all this crap out. Oh, Mick, yeah. if we find a shovel or something down here. Yeah, now I want some dynamite. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that, it's that, it's that would make sense, wouldn't the it? the size of the tracks. Yeah, that's perfect, though. That's the perfect size for those tracks. So I'm guessing this is the working face of the mine up here. Yep. It looks like it. A more Hessian. Yeah, these are probably muck bags, those Hessian bags. Oh, <laughs> Someone put that in and went, nope. <laughs> What's down here? That goes in like 600 easy. Oh, a wombat. <laughs> oh, shit. That's not good. <laughs> we found a wombat. <laughs> Mick saying this one's not pissed off like the last one I pissed off. And that was in a much smaller hole that was a lot harder to get out of. <laughs> what blows me away about looking at these side seams is you can see, you can literally see the chisel marks yeah, yeah. where they've yeah. gone in to try and take this take out. More, yeah, take more of it out because it's obviously got something in it. Yep. And then it's too small for them to follow. Yeah, so they not, just leave not, it. Yeah, they're not banging into that. They've chased these veins. They've actively worked these tiny little side veins. Yeah, tried to get as far in them as possible. This is the only spot I found in this mine where I could almost stand up straight. Almost. Sorry, I've got a moment. <laughs> Mick's just walking out. And he goes, oh, 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 he goes to grab it. Look, look, that is a bottle. Bottom number, number two. two. <laughs> not helpful. <laughs> Well, I'm not, not going to drag this sleeper out so we can have a look at it in the daylight. Well, now we know why there's so many nails in the waste rock piles too, though. Yeah. Think about it, right? Because they're mucking. Yeah. How's that we find an original Vegemite jar, the rarest Vegemite jar you can possibly find, an original wax candle and wooden rail system. No one has been in there. With the mine being protected by the dogs right there, Mick goes, hey, I found their crusher. And apparently he's found their crusher. 
Oh. Yep. Yep. That's the strike plate, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Wow, that makes sense why this is such a strong foundation. That's all been cemented together. Yep. It's right out the front of their mine, and then we've got the strike plate for a crusher. Yep, I'm gonna clear this and detect it. Yeah, bullets. Ah, my father's been here in the past. <laughs> <laughs> well, while Mick looks for his relics in front of the crusher, I am gonna go back in and I'm gonna find some sort of side vein to take a good sample from. Oh, we're going on an adventure. Mm. And I'm just gonna to try to find any significant side vein that I can take a sample out of. Oh man, it's tempting to take some of that. Look at that. Wow. This is the point where these rails deviate around a corner and we've got one of these side offshoots. I reckon our offshoot veins are gonna be our best bet. Because you can actively see that they've chased the quartz veins everywhere through here. So I'm going to get to work chipping some of this stuff out. I've chipped out a whole bunch of this stuff and it's now in my smog. I really don't know if there's going to be any gold in this. It's the end of the day, I have to go home. And I know everyone's going to have a million questions regarding what this mine is and, and what it's about and where the gold is. And we will figure that out together, but for now it's all crush time. From all that excitement to a miserable wet day out here. Fernie, are you going to help or are you going in? I feel like the best hobo spindle in the whole world. One full of gold ore. Well, potential gold ore. We're about to find out. This is one of the strangest veins I've ever worked. It's all bedrock, it's all solid rock, but it was very soft. It's obviously been cooked, compressed, busted up, and generally had the absolute crap beat out of it for it to become that soft and malleable. And there's plenty of quartz in it, but it seems to be mixed through that highly compacted bedrock. <laughs> The first thing I gotta do is get rid of all of the loose dirt that came out from when I extracted it. All right. Now in theory, if there's gold, it's gonna be locked up in these bigger chunks of quartz. So what I'm gonna do is run these through my crusher. I was gonna use my little angle grinder crusher in the field, but that's too small. And because we're home, we can use my big crusher here. The crusher only has a one inch inlet, which means that this sort of rock won't fit in it. But this has a much bigger inlet. This will. There we are, that's our dirt pulverized down to a reasonable fine crush. This will tell us if there's any gold in it. On small scale mining operations like that, generally speaking, they're not gonna leave any kind of high quality ore in the working face of their mine. They're gonna chase that as far as they can, as long as it's profitable. What we're looking for are small little side veins that will ultimately give us some decent gold for a hobby prospector. So even if there is like 10 or 15 specks in this small sample, there's a good chance that I'll be going back and working that vein. But for now, we must venture into the rain and pan it down. Nice full wheelbarrow, thanks to the heavens. Very dark colored soil, wow. Imagine the arsenic in that. Because I'm colorblind, I always find it much easier to see gold in a black pan. So we're just gonna do a little bit of a transfer first. Before we see how much gold or no gold is in that ore, I wanted to weigh this little nugget that I found out at the start of the day. 
This little piece of gold tells us a lot. It tells us that there's chunky gold at that mine. It also tells us that the gold is heavily associated with iron, which you can see staining the gold. Which means that if I find a high concentration of chalcopyrite or something similar in the ore that I'm extracting out of that mine, I might have a greater chance of finding more puglets like this one. This nice little chunk of gold feels like a point 0.1. Ooh, point 0.131. It's like 12 bucks of gold. Let's see what's in your. I'm gonna go back to that mine with loaming sacks so I can take multiple samples from multiple veins. But this is a good opportunity to see what was in that side vein before getting the wombat out of the mine and seeing what was in their main face. We've got a lot of sulfides. Well, that's all that silver material. That's a good start. That indicates iron. Is there one piece of gold? Any gold at all? We have got gold. We have got gold. Some of this silver material could be containing small pieces of gold, but we actually have very small pieces of free mill right there. Indicating that mine's still paying out, now we just have to find the good vein. 